Lesson 12.3b, Calculating Experimental Probability of Compound Events. So far we've learned a compound event is an event that is made up of two or more simple events. And examples of compound events would be flip a coin and roll a number cube, flip a coin and spin a spinner, or flip two coins or roll two number cubes. These are independent events in which one outcome doesn't rely on another outcome. The experimental probability of a compound event can be found by using recorded data. We can record the data as numbers or as tally marks in a table. So the compound event would be flip a coin, we'd get heads or tails, and roll a number cube, we'd get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And the total should be equal to the amount of trials. When we add all these numbers up, or count all these tally marks, it will be equal to the number of trials we performed. A pizza restaurant records the pizza sizes and toppings on their orders, as shown in the table. What is the experimental probability that the next order is for a large pepperoni pizza? So, the compound event is large for the size and pepperoni for the topping. And we can see where large and pepperoni meet, it's eight. That's going to be our numerator. And remember, the total of all of these is the denominator of the ratio. So counting the tally marks, there were 50 orders. We add 10 and 13 and 16 and 11, which is 50. So that's going to be our denominator. We have 8 fiftieths. The experimental probability of the next order being a large pepperoni is 8 fiftieths. We can simplify it to 4 25ths. So the experimental probability that the next order is a large pepperoni is 4 25ths. Now we have some ice cream orders. The compound event is the size and the flavor. So we have a size or flavor, vanilla, chocolate, or strawberry. What is the experimental probability that the next order will be a small strawberry? We look for small, meaning strawberry, and we see a 2. That is going to be our numerator, the number of small strawberry orders, and the denominator is going to be the total number of all the orders. We have 11 plus 9, that's 20 orders in all. The probability of the next order being a small strawberry is 2 twentieths, which we can simplify to 1 tenth. We can write it as a decimal, as 0 0.1, or we can write it as 10%. Now, if we look at this table, small chocolate has the greatest experimental probability. Small chocolate has seven. That's the most out of all of them, isn't it? That's the greatest. And large strawberry only has one. That's got the least experimental probability. When we write an experimental probability as a percent, it makes it easier to recognize whether a probability is high or low. So on our number line, with 0 is impossible and certain is 1 or 100%, 10% would be about right here. Here's 50%, here's 0. So it's unlikely the next order will be for a small strawberry. If the data had shown that it was 80 or 90%, we would know that it would be highly likely that the next order would be for a small strawberry. The experimental probability of a compound event is equal to the ratio of the number of the first event plus the second event to the total number of events. Okay, that wraps up the second part. We're going to move on to the last part using a simulation to make a prediction for compound events. Just remember that the numerator in our ratio is the amount that is in the table for those two events, and the denominator is the total of all the events, the number of the trials. I hope you'll join me for the last part of the lesson, and that you have a great day. Bye!